So in the previous video, I talked about wanting to build some kits and practice some stuff and sharpen up my skills. And the sort of connection here, even though these are two wildly different series, the idea is that, um, like with the LBX kits, it used to be that some of these were getting very expensive and very hard to find, like that $100 Triton kit that I talked about. And in the case of this one, this kit has gotten hard enough to find that it currently goes for $117 on Amazon. This kit, which I built maybe over 10 years ago now, is kind of a travesty. You see, at the time, I was a, a babby modeler who was dumb and impatient and who didn't try to cut off parts cleanly or sand anything or hide seam lines or anything like that. This was probably like 20 bucks when I bought it. And I, I felt that just being able to snap it together was worth the 20 bucks because then I had my own little Tachikoma that could sit on the shelf and, you know, that's cool and all. But it eventually got packed away and put to the side just because it's, it's kind of sad to look at. There's glue in there and there's seams that don't line up. It kind of amounts to wanting to practice on a cheap, easy-to-get model kit so I can repair a harder to find, now much more expensive to replace model kit. And now we're actually going to get to building the uh, LBX AX00. I'll just take a look at all this. Just kind of give you a look at what everything's sort of doing. Usually a lot of care put into these instructions and it's, it's just neat how, how they have everything laid out. So yeah, let's get started. I think uh, if I have anything to say, I will pause and start talking again. But for now, I'm going to put on some, uh, some of my silly music. And I'm just going to get to work on this guy. So I think I've already hit my first hurdle here, where looking at the way this all goes together, if I wanted to close up those seam lines right now, I'd be kind of doing it all around here. I've even got some seam lines right kind of built in there that I don't like. I don't know how well they're showing. You can see there's a little bit of a line right there. But if I seal this all up now, that gives me no access to these other pieces. It's also going to be kind of tricky to do the top of that head there. Now we got those red lines. So I might just leave this kind of like soft fit together for now. I was hoping to maybe have a little bit more success playing with the Tamiya cement right off the bat, but no such luck. Whew. Okay, that was a lot harder than it looked. But through the magic of editing, I made that look like it only took one try. actually kind of nice the way they lay this all out it tells you those are leg joints those are hand and arm more stuff you just kind of don't like that
Ooh, these little fucking things are not wanting to go in. Ah, did it. That's, wow, maybe one of the most annoying parts of Head to Assemble. Like, look at this. It's so tiny. You have to position it in such a weird way, like, I would almost prefer that was just a sticker. I don't like using stickers. Dude, don't like this. They still get little screws on them. Terrible. Anyways. So, some of the eagle-eyed amongst you might have noticed that the footage for the time-lapse was not especially good. And that's mostly my fault. Had the camera set up in a bad way and uh, was sitting a little bit further back than I should have been. Meaning, I have made steps to rectify that. For one, I have adjusted where the camera is. And I have also set up this handy remote viewing for my PC so I can actually keep an eye on the recording while it's going. That's just particularly neat. That's that's nothing you really need to care about, but I just thought it was cool. But there is one more thing I've done, which is adding some extra lighting. So overall, the, the look of things will be much nicer. But unfortunately, I've already built the model, and I can't unbuild it to then show you how I built it. Not that it's an especially in, like in-depth process for you to watch. A few things worth talking about. Uh, with this particular model. The AX00 is maybe the least good model for me to practice with the Tamiya Cement, which was sort of my stated mission, because 
make sure that's closed tight. Uh, as you can sort of see, both on the arms and legs, there's these very pronounced seam lines that are supposed to be there. And you can even see both in the, the promotional model that those are supposed to be there. They're not supposed to be hidden. It's part of the design that it has these very pronounced, oop, <laughs> um, very distinct seam lines. So um, there was only so many places I could really practice with that, like on the shoulders, on the side of the torso, and on his little skirt to really hide the seam lines. Everything else about this, uh, it's a very well-designed kit. I mean, I'll give them that for the look they were going for. Um, Mr. Zero Zero here actually does a fairly good job of kind of coming together and looking really nice. It's a very simple kit. Um, just the joints kind of hold all of the limbs together. There's no sort of internal skeleton. Although there are uh, there are LBX kits, like high-grade ones and P-Bandai grade kits. Uh, I don't know if that's a grade, technically. That do come with... Uh, like an internal skeleton that you build around, which I think is very cool. Kind of reminds me of the, um, I believe they were called the Tin Pet for Metabots. Now, all that aside, uh, no more distractions. Uh, one of the things I've held off on doing is completely sealing up the head because I might want to do something with the face here. And I've also removed his little core crest because I'm going to do something neat with that in just a second. And I have um, done a little extra detailing on that. So, uh, fun kit to build, uh, really not that hard. I maybe put a little bit more effort into it than I needed to. Might even still go back in and deepen up some of these seam lines because I think after I do paint it, that'll be a nice place to do like a dark wash so you get some extra dark details in there. Um, and then there was one more thing, and I had some success doing um, seam line hiding on this weapon with... You can kind of see it's a little crooked. It points up just a little bit. And uh, this actually leads into something that I was intending to do anyways, um, which is talking about the way that the Tamiya plastic cement doesn't so much um, bond the two pieces as much as it melts them into uh, a sort of mushy plastic that once it fully dries becomes hard and solidified as one piece. Between the... The cement going in to the two pieces and sort of gathering up and this one little weak point here, it caused the plastic to soften up enough entirely that it just bent right off. And I had to then reapply it and sort of squish it back into place. Uh, and then from there, go in with good old uh, four-step polishing box to sand up and clean up everything so the seams are way less noticeable. And once I put some color on there, uh, won't really be visible at all. But that's just sort of an interesting little thing that I felt was worth talking about because it sort of, uh, it highlights the process that I'm going for. And then the other thing I want to talk about, which is just more general sort of stuff. Get that out of there. Uh, I haven't done any of the stickers. I think I want to do as much of this as I can with paints and other details. But also saved all the runner frames which just as a neat little note uh the way that the lbx kits are oh there's his gun what they end up doing is they put in these sort of built-in score marks and uh lines where the they like purposefully break apart so you can sort of separate out each of the, the sections and it's the blue ones i want in particular because that's a nice um it's a nice color match for the Tachikoma kit, uh, but I'm going to be painting over that anyways. It's more of just a coincidence than anything. But I've also got all these nice little bits that I can break down and then throw in a little glass jar with a little bit of the Tamiya cement, and that will melt it down and make it into a sort of plastic slurry, uh, a sort of plastic goop that I can use to paint into the cracks and other damaged areas, and that'll adhere to the the, the plastic of the Tachikoma model kit, and then I will be able to repair and sort of improve that using the same techniques that I intended to practice uh, with this guy, which uh, both did and didn't happen. And we've got a kitty visitor. So, let me just move this cat. Yeah, I think... That's about as much as I can really do on the uh, the zero zero here without 
getting out some paint and detailing and doing all of that which unfortunately it's very cold out and uh, most of the like spray painting and airbrushing that i can do has to be outside and it's um it's cold out right now so there is one thing though that i did want to do and it involves these these are glow-in-the-dark pigments which should work very nicely with the um typical resin that I use and I'm thinking it would be a cool little detail to replace the chest crest with um a resin cast piece that glows in the dark and the way I'm going to do that is very simple I'm going to take this two-part mold putty I'm going to make a mold for this I'm going to cast a replacement piece and if I do it right even if it doesn't have the um the little notch there which slots into his chest it should still be held in place by the sort of outer ring keyhole looking piece and then i'll do a little paint around the edges and we should have a nice like shiny glow in x there and i think that'd be a really cool detail just to give this a little bit more pop and if i can try and figure out some ways to go through this guy and you know, maybe spruce it up, add some cool details using other resin techniques. So I'm going to give this a shot really quick and we'll see how it turns out. And, uh, well, if I fail horribly, you'll know. So I think it's going to need a little bit more time to set, but give that one more little charge, and you'll see if my all my extra effort was worth it. All right, switch the lights off. Yeah, and <laughs> you can see everything else that's glowing right now. But yeah, it's a little rough. Could use some touching up. Get these lights back on. There we go. Oh. Ta da! Ooh. Yeah, that's a problem I tend to have. The legs come off way too easily. But as far as sprucing it up from, you know, sticker and some plain plastic to something with a little bit more personality to it, I think that's a pretty cool touch. Right now, the resin's still awfully gummy, and all these are pretty soft. Uh, but, but yeah, that was just a little something extra I wanted to toy around with, see if I could make a mold of a part. I think maybe the mold is a little bit imperfect, but once this fully cures hard, I'll be able to sand it and smooth it out and make it look a little nicer. Uh, but as for this guy, I will probably return to trying to uh, improve upon him later, and... For now, I'm going to call it a wrap on this project, maybe touch on some of these parts later, and uh, start moving on to working on the Tachikoma. And that is going to involve melting down some 
runner frames and seeing if I can't do enough sanding and cementing and uh, other stuff to make that a presentable piece. But if you've watched this far and hopefully this one didn't turn out too long and you enjoyed it, let me know. Uh, there will be more videos sooner or later, probably more gondolas, probably more models. Thanks again for watching. I uh, always appreciate it. Uh, the few dozen or so of you that are out there, uh, friends and family alike. And hopefully you will like uh, the other things I work on coming sometime in the future. So uh, I will see you in the next video. So till then.